Welcome to Believe in Colts, where Lawrence Owen and Dequel Jackson brings you everything about the shoe. Welcome back. We are back again, Colts Nation, with another edition of Believe in Colts podcast. And I'm Lawrence Owen. With me as usual, Dequel Jackson. How was your week, Dequel? Uh, pretty pretty interesting. As you can see, my backdrop is a little bit different behind me. I'm uh, traveling a little bit, but uh, I'm always ready to talk some sports and talk about these these Colts and how they were able to uh, play a meaningful game against the uh, Baltimore Ravens on Monday night. However, as we all know, they came up short. They played a hard-fought game, but there's so much to talk about with this game, giving up, you know, as a defender, you know, it crushes me to see these guys have such a great lead. And dominating for most of the game, dominated most of the game, and to lose a 19 point, you know, margin in the fourth quarter is just heartbreaking and, and just indicative of what this season has been for our for our Colts. This is the second game this year. The Colts are now one and four. In my opinion, I feel like the Indianapolis Colts legitimately should be, had they not made weird mistakes in, in certain places. They should be at minimum three and two right now because I feel like they should have beat the Ravens and I feel like yes. they should have beat the Rams, you know? Yes. And and now we're sitting in a in a precarious position, very similar to that 2018 season when Andrew Luck, you know, with that mm. that one and five and make the playoffs, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, but that kind of stuff does not happen every year. That that's so rare in the NFL, but if you look at the schedule uh, for the Indianapolis Colts, we just got through the meat of the schedule. Literally, you know, when you look at the teams that the Colts played the, the first five weeks, all these teams had 10 plus wins last year. And sure. we, we played the majority of them, even with the injuries that we have, because let's face it, injuries are not injuries are not you can't use them as an excuse because every team goes through them. Right. It's that right. next man up mentality. You got to be ready for that. But. Looking forward, the Colts really have to start putting things to business if they have any inclination of of, of getting even, even a, a divisional title or making the playoffs at this point, right? Yeah, it's, it's really tough right now in that locker room, and they're literally taking it week to week, and we've discussed it before. In this business, whether you're four and one or one and four, you literally have to approach every game as it matters and it does and for them to dig themselves out of this hole it's encouraging right the last two weeks have been encouraging from an offensive standpoint Carson Wentz felt he was still under siege, siege a bit but he was still able to make throws we had some guys make some really big plays all the running backs contributed uh on the ground catching the ball out of the backfield Michael Pittman Jr. had a, a, a heck of a catch Oh you know, and it was just big play after big play, and it just juiced and energized the entire team, something that's been missing, something that we hadn't seen all year. However, this defense, I said it some some shows ago, you know, when you've been – when you be put in a situation when your offense is struggling, and even though everyone's – deemed you to have this great defense and and all you know adding pieces and you know a guy like DeForest Buckner has has had a slow start this year and and we're in terms of quarterback hits we, we rank towards the bottom in the league you know we're not generating pressure it all kind of unfolds because of the position you've been put in early in the season because of as you mentioned some injuries we're not going to make excuses but it put a lot of strain, a lot of strain on the defense. And you saw them get, we talked about it before. They got gassed. They got tired. Yeah. They got tired. And it's it, it, it shows up. It doesn't show up until it shows up. And it's in critical points of the game. And this team is going to have to find a way to finish and play four quarters. Right now, we've seen three really good quarters of this football team. And it's there. They just got to find a way to 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 keep that momentum. And to, to finish out games to play four four quarters. We talk about it all the time, being that we have a good running back core about how you know you run the football to wear out a defense. Well, in this game, Lamar Jackson, even though he wasn't putting up, even though he wasn't putting up the numbers through the first three quarters, 
he was having an effect on that defense. He was running all over the field, making them run and making them tired until the fourth quarter. It's exhausting. Oh, it's exhausting to run behind a guy who's a, I hate to say this, he's a running back that's a thrower. It's so difficult. It doesn't matter. If you, if, if Fluce is calling a zone coverage and you're a linebacker and you're in that gray area to 10 to 12 yards and you, you feel the pocket start to break down and you, you feel like Lamar is leaving the pocket because he's such a great athlete, Lawrence, you're more inclined to, to leave your responsibility, whether it be the curl flat, the hook curl, you're more prone to, to, to try to <laughs> cut off and, and to make up as much ground as possible to cut Lamar Jackson off. And when that happens, Lamar has figured out how guys are playing him. Now he's able to ma- manipulate the coverages and it, it strains you as a defense. And it's, it's so difficult to play a guy that's a, former MVP, you know, and like you said, we, we had him bottled up for most of the game, and then he just unloaded. Yeah. My thought process while watching the game – now, watching the game is one thing because you have that knee-jerk reaction, you know, and 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 seeing the game film is one thing. And like we was talking about the All-22 drop today, I got to see the All-22 of the game, and my perspective of the game completely changed. Yeah, my blame – changed you know we were talking we were talking about we were talking about earlier you know about being gassed and and uh but here's here's another issue that we were talking beforehand that i want to bring back up before we was recording we were discussing this there was a lot of injuries right on the secondary a lot of our start we had a couple practice squad guys out there things of that nature in the fourth quarter and when something like that happens, I brought up that you know you got to change how you how you cover at this point. You, you got to change your game plan because of the inexperience you have out there on I the field. I can see the smoke just looming yeah. from your head right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What was your response to that when I said mm. that? How? What was your response to that? Because I think you made an excellent point. Yeah, I was. I was frustrated. I was very frustrated because in one particular instance that we, you're alluding to was the overtime drive, mm-hmm. right? With Lamar Jackson. Now he's, you know, obviously he's showing us why he was a one-time MVP. He's showing us, he's putting it on display in front of the entire world of witness. And to add to your point about, yeah, you had some injuries in the back end of the defense. So, um, you know, you as a coordinator, and I'm, I'm going to imagine I'm flukes for a second. You want to switch things up. Mm-hmm. My reaction to that is every cornerback in the National Football League can play man coverage. You mm-hmm. would not be in the NFL if you cannot play man coverage, whether you're a, a, a corner, a safety, a nickelback, a linebacker. Everyone knows how to play man coverage. And in that moment, that particular moment in overtime, is, is what we call a got to have it moment. They have to score to win and when i saw our defense playing soft zone coverage and back-to-back plays it pissed me off because now you have the in the inexperience in the back end with all the injuries now guys uh, don't really know how to work off of each other in zone coverage and the way i was taught how to play zone coverage in the red zone backed up it's called a zone matchup concept. If a guy runs in your zone, it's very simple. He's now your man. And I hate to do this because he's such a great player for us. And he means so much to this franchise Mm -hmm. and this year, because he plays his ass off, plays his heart out. Darius Leonard. It wasn't his fault. I'm not going to say that, but what I saw watching that film was his inexperience. From this moment, I promise you, from this moment, he's he's gone back and he's watched this tape. This is a teaching moment because between Darius Leonard and the safety behind him, they were in no man's land. Hollywood Brown, he, so if I can paint this picture, Hollywood Brown runs an in-breaking route. Darius Leonard cuts it off. But what Darius Leonard didn't do is look behind him, feel where Hollywood Brown is. Now he becomes your man. Instead, his eyeballs were on Lamar Jackson, which, which is a sign of inexperience. The safety behind him, eyes were on Lamar Jackson, 
which is inexperienced. And guess what? It's a throw and catch, a practice throw and catch. And is it their fault? Yeah, they were out there playing the game. They scored on this defense. But I have to turn my blame to Fluce. Got to have it moment. You have to match up. Every guy can play this coverage. At the very least, you have uh, 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 some sort of uh, man, a cover five concept where you have two safeties. You bracket someone. There was none of that going on, which was mind-blowing to me. And you got my blood boiling because I couldn't <laughs> fathom why this team was playing such – Soft coverage when you're backed up. That's not how the game is supposed to be played. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, another situation that I was noticing, again, in my opinion, this goes on Flus. This does not go on the players because I feel like the players were doing exactly what Flus was asking them to do, right? Right. And that right. is the pass rush, your front four. Mm. Now, in the first three quarters, they did what they needed to do. You, you when In a situation like, like Lamar Jackson – you're playing reactionary. You're keeping your eyes up. You know, you box them in. You got your your two defensive tackles that are that are holding their spots at the bottom of the line. Your outside pass rushers come around to the outside, get to about the level of where the, the quarterback is, and then you wait, you hope that the defensive tackles make the pressure, and then your right. defensive ends come in and make the kill shot, right? right. That's right. that's because if, if a defensive end breaks in then you're leaving this open spot for Lamar to come out and he's gone. Yes, right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and so I seen that and that was very smart and, and, and it worked great mm -hmm. for three quarters, but in doing that for three straight quarters against Lamar Jackson, you Gotta wear change. out that defensive line. Those yeah. guys, these are 250, 300 pound plus guys that are out there trying to chase Lamar Jackson down <laughs> for an <laughs> Good hour. Luck. Okay. Right. Good right. luck with that. Okay. Right. So in the fourth quarter, after Lamar basically walks the field for that touchdown, right? Mm -hmm. And just there was there was he was just doing as will. I was right. like, this is where Flus needs to change his, that scheme up. This is where he yeah. needs to start making his ends and his tackles get in after after the quarterback, yeah. no matter what, right? If you no, leave no a, if you leave a gap, you leave a gap. You get him out of his out, out of his safety spot out of his comfort zone to where he could just yeah. sit back there for that extra second or two because they're gassed. It's hard to get past those offensive linemen and wait right. for his guys to hit that soft spots in the zone. You got to, you got to get that pressure on him at that point, make him make a play. Don't allow right. him to sit there and just pick you apart. Yeah. I, I, and it, it, you're exactly right. And a lot of it comes with substitutions. You gotta, you gotta get those guys out. Did you mm -hmm. mentioned these are 300 pound guys running behind, one of the fastest, most athletic guys in the National Football League. What I noticed that didn't happen was, which typically happens when a team is driving down the field and it's second or third down and it's overtime game, then a, a timeout happens. At mm -hmm. some point, you got to say, this is overtime. You got you got you got to burn one. You got to mm -hmm. give you guys a break. If you're not going to have a, a massive change on the D-line standpoint and sub those guys out, because when Lamar Jackson gets to running and juking and crossing fields, that's tiring for everyone. It's time for me to watch, you know, <laughs> let alone be on the field. Right. So, so you have to do a better job. You know, obviously, uh, Quiddy Pay was out. You had some guys that were, you know, the Forrest Buckner, who we we brought up, he has to get back on track. Um, you know, it, it's definitely they have to go back to the drawing board. They have to figure out, OK, who are we as a defense? How can we? You know, change things up because it, listen, Lamar Jackson's an MVP player. I can't say that enough. If you give him the same look over and over and over, not only is he going to feel where the softness of the defense is, the guys up top watching the game, they're going to have a different plan. So we have to do a better job of, of in game adjustments. And you're exactly right. This has been the tale of the season. When we're in close games, we got to find a way to 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 to, to keep the the attack on, mm -hmm. and and find multiple ways to be efficiently you know, put our players in better positions to to be successful. Because again, you can't the blame is shared amongst the players and the coaches. The mm -hmm. players play, the coaches coach. The the coaches want to do their best job of putting the players in the right position. Obviously, that wasn't the case on Monday night, which was unfortunate because those guys played a heck of a game, a heck of a game for three quarters. And to be in that locker room right now, to lose the game in that fashion, to be up 19 points 
with less than 12 minutes in the game. Again, defense, you take your foot off the the calls predicted, predicated for them to take the the your foot off the gas. Now Lamar Jackson gets in more of a rhythm. Now he mm-hmm. hits a big play, you know, tight end over the field, crossing route. Now they're gaining momentum. Now all hell sets in. And now we're we're it, I, I hate, I absolute hate that style of football. And I've been a brand, I've been playing in that system forever. Is when you get a lead, let's let's methodically let the offense just Give them what they want to eat the clock. No, let's keep applying the pressure. Let's mm-hmm. keep applying pressure. Let's let's. What do we have to lose? What do we have to lose? And you know what? When you play that way, unfortunately, things like this happen when you lose a nineteen point lead. So I had some guys talk about. Well, they were still bringing blitzes, but ninety. Like I'm watching this play. And yeah, they would bring a blitz occasionally in the fourth quarter or in that overtime drive. But you know how many times I saw three-man fronts where the defensive ends would fall back into coverage against ridiculous. Lamar Jackson? Ridiculous. Why are we doing that? That that's that makes no sense to me at he all. He had a career day. He had a career day. Yeah. He, he threw for over 400. I want to say 400. He, either way, he yeah. had a career day. Absolutely. I mean, granted, on the other side of the ball, our offense would generate the most points or most yards we've had all season over 500. Yeah. But yet – The score doesn't reflect that. You know, I wonder why. (laughs) Exactly. And another, well, okay. So there's, we, we have put the hammer on the defense for the most part of this. this, I mean, uh, I mean, (laughs) listen, we, we have to, we have to call it for what it is. Exactly. Our offense generated most, you know, listen, over 500, 512 net yards offensively. You should win the football game. You would again, We have to look at, I mean, Flus and the defense. We, we It's only right. When you're able to yes. score points, move the ball, your running game is working, and you have Lamar Jackson, you have them bottled up. And to take your foot off the, off the gas and say, you know what? Baltimore Ravens, you're a good team, but we're just going to let you methodically go down the field. And you know what? I bet you every guy on that football team is looking at Flus a little side-eyed you know, this week is like, what the hell were you thinking? This is Lamar Jackson. <laughs> right. This is Lamar Jackson. He can beat us both throwing the football and running the football. And guess what? In one quarter, he was able to have a career day and just embarrass us as a football team. Well, I mean, it's not like we didn't know he couldn't throw for 300 plus yards. I mean, the sure. week before he just had a 300 yard game uh, throwing yeah. the football against the Denver defense. Right. You know, People underestimate his arm strength. And when he's able to throw the ball from the pocket, granted, his accuracy could be a lot better. But every game, he's he's confident enough to stand in that pocket and make the read and throw the ball down and deliver the ball down the field when it's it, when that moment arises. And that's what makes him a great player. And we just let a great player just, you know, have the field to himself, which is which is frustrating for me to watch. Yeah, it was very frustrating. But I'm, I'm going to kind of move on because of the situation. Mm-hmm. A lot of fans are throwing blame not on the defense. They're like, well, the defense had a bunch of, you know, practice squad guys and backups. And we only had three cornerbacks and two safeties. So we had five total defensive backs out there. You know, yeah. so there was no switching out to have, you know, breathers or right. anything like that because we only had five. Uh, yeah. So I I, I, I kind of can, yeah. can ease Fair. off a little bit on that. But at the same time, there's a lot of fans out there, and I think this is unjustly, but they said the offense took their foot off the gas and should have done a kill shot at the end of the game mm-hmm. and didn't mm-hmm. at the end when they were running it forcing um uh forcing the ravens to uh burn their timeouts uh yes. lining up the ball and then kicking the field goal going with the hurt huh. kicker right but my thought process i'm sitting there in that specific situation with 4 minutes mm-hmm. left in the game and you're up by a tu- by a touchdown and a two point conversion cuz you were up 8 right. at that point right? right if you kick a field goal game's over Right. And you're at the 15 yard line, right? My thought is that was the smart move. They're like, oh, you don't put a hurt kicker in there. 
If you score mm-hmm. a touchdown, the game's over. If you kick a field goal, the game's over too at that point. So, right. and the and the field goal kicker, admittedly, was having hip issues, but he was telling Coach Reich, "I'm good for 45. You can count me from 45 the whole game." At that mm-hmm. point, when you're the coach, do you trust in the player? Because, I mean, apparently in my, I mean, he 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 gets paid to play too, you know. Carson yeah. Wentz gets paid to play. He was hurt. He's put in there. You know, you right. got to rely on him. If he says he's, he's good to go, you're good to go. That's my thought process on that. What's yours? Yeah, it's amazing when you try to go into a coach's mind and try to rationalize what, what they were thinking at that time. But you asked a question about would I trust the player? Now, here's the thing. I I would trust the player, but if my offense is, is clicking the way it is, and they're moving the ball down the field, and we're having success. I'd rather put my trust in in eleven guys than one guy, you know. And he's having hip issues. Hey, if it was a twenty-something yarder, I got. I, I completely understand. You trust your kicker. If he says he can go, he can make this kick. You go and do it. But man, you know, it's just unfortunate how things kind of unfold. And he he yeah. And that was the that was the win the game. 47 yards to win the game. I just think you should have been more aggressive. You have to be more aggressive as much as you can, at least make it very easy. That that isn't an easy kick. You have a young kicker who spends most of his time indoors in a dome kicking. You know, so this was this was an iffy call from I mean, I, I appreciate the I would have gone with the kick, but I would much prefer it be a lot closer you know, maybe another 20 yards or so, you know, we drive the ball, we stay aggressive offensively. And I have trust in Carson Wentz and that offense to move the ball. And you let them know during that drive, hey, listen, we want to kick a field goal, but we need to get to X. This is something that you practice every week. Every week, there's a scenario in practice where we need a field goal to win the game. We need a touchdown to win the game. Two minute drive, four minute offense. These are things that they work on day in and day out, week in and week out at practice. So a 47-yarder, I'm sure Frank Wright knew they had practiced that situation before. I I, I promise you. So he had faith in his decision process because these coaches are all creatures of habits. They won't do anything they hadn't done before. And uh, in this case, you know, my own personal opinion, I would much prefer to see our offense stay aggressive, get closer, and, you know, if you don't have a touchdown there, then you you settle for three, but not at that distance, you know, especially with a with your, your kicker with a hip issues. And it, and it came to bite them, bite them back, you know. Yeah, I get I, I get that thought process. But, you know, that's a that's one of those kind of feel it moments, I think. Right. Yeah. You oh, yeah. It. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So oh, that's, yeah. that's that's my worry. I, third and eight. They ran it up the gut. I think they were running it up the gut at that point to try to set Rodrigo right wherever yes, he wanted yeah. to be. Uh, and they lost show yardage faith in, because of it, you know? Yeah, show faith in your your guys. Hey, mm-hmm. we had converted a fourth and 11 early oh, yeah. in that game. Oh, yeah. You know, so it's there. We've proven we're, we're not afraid to, you know, go for it on fourth down. I'm not saying go for well, it on fourth down at that moment. But just be aggressive. What do you have to lose? Yeah, I you mean, know when you- there was a third and sixteen that uh, Jonathan Taylor took to the house on a seventy-six yes. yarder. Yes. So I yes. mean, <laughs> yeah, those type of things were happening during this game. Yeah, your luck. Yeah. You know, you had a lot of things going in your favor. Why not? But I again, I go back to the point you just made. It's a feel thing. Mm-hmm. You know, Frank Wright. Do you? How do, what do you feel? What, what do you, have you, have you watched the game? What guys can you trust? What, you know, is Carson Wentz, can I put the ball in his hands? Can I de- uh, design a play for Michael Pittman Jr.? You know what, you gotta, you, coaches have to practice that moment as well as the players. And I remember being in Indy at the time and Chuck Pagano, I love this drill. No one else. And Eric Mangini used to do it. And It was a drill where at at some point without practice, the whistle would blow and everyone would have to come up and the head coach would give you a scenario. Hey, it's a a minute 30 in the game left. We're down by a touchdown. We need a a touchdown to win the game. Ball's on the 35-yard line. 
when you have one timeout. So those type of, you know, it puts everyone on edge. So you got to go back to the drawing board if you're Frank right. You know, you got to find a way to score. First of all, score points in the red zone. That'll, that'll clear it all up. So you don't you don't put everything on your hurt kicker. You know, let, let's fix that. Let's fix the offense in that area. Be more efficiently there. And, uh, you know, so we all win the game and not put it on a kicker, which everyone's hurt playing this game. There's no one not injured. There's no excuse. But, you know, he suited up. He dressed to play. He was out there to make the kick. Unfortunately, he came up short. Well, he went wide left, if I remember right. And that's a big point to go, to think about, okay? Mm -hmm. Because the previous kick got blocked, right? Yes. That, that one? Yes. The Campbell. Yeah. Campbell yes. came up, Barry, got both his paws up there and blocked that sucker. And if mm -hmm. you go look at the one where he hooks it left uh, at the end of the game, uh, Campbell got at. through again. And yes. had his paws up there in the air. And those were some big paws, I'm telling you. Yes. <laughs> He's a big dude. <laughs> that's and, one of the biggest humans I've ever seen. Yeah. Hands down. Yeah. Hands down. And, yeah so I can see that having an effect. Because I, 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 I'll guarantee if you ask Blankenship, did you see gonna, that? Did that affect yeah. you? Is that why you hooked it away from him? He'll be like, you know, he ain't going to admit to that. But no, you can't miss a dude like that coming in and getting his right. hands and up muscle there. memory. You've gone yeah. into the week knowing where Calais Campbell is going to be because he's that guy, mm -hmm. the tallest. Guy. I don't care if you don't. <laughs> there's been guys not to be a back to be backups that only play special teams, but you know what? They had height and length, and guess what? Mm -hmm. They were right in the kicking lane mm -hmm. uh, for field goal uh, block. So, yeah, uh, muscle memory would, of course, he he knew where Calais Campbell would be, and he diverted his kick away from him. But I, like you say, he'll never admit that. He'll no. never admit. I've been around some really, really fantastic kickers, Phil Dawson in Cleveland and Adam Vinatieri and Indy. And uh, to see those guys, the muscle memory that those guys practice with, and I've had a chance to have conversations with them and just what goes through your mind, you know, in big moment situations, because as, as much as we, you know, people may give kickers and punters a hard time, you don't, don't people only know you when you either make a game winning kick or you miss a game winning kick. And it's a tough, tough lane to, to live in, man, but people do it. Um, and, uh, you know, none of it is easy, but man, you know, we just couldn't catch a break when we needed it. I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. Uh, because there's multiple different opinions that I see for all over the place about kickers and punters. All right. <laughs> when it comes to the locker room. Um, obviously, Pat McAfee, he's a well-known guy. Uh, he's right. always for the brand, that type of situation. Right, right. And you have some guys out there that are like, you know, that that show the are they 280 pounds and super <laughs> athletic and all this no we get that no. but they're right. still do, do you feel do you still look at them as football players like guys oh, yeah. out there you know that, oh, yeah, that's, that's my a, thought process to you yeah that's some of the coolest guys in the building because they they don't have a you know they're not in your defensive meeting room they kind of they, they're kind of a neutral person to kind of you know, shed your, your frustration with. But I've always had a really good relationship with the punters. You know, Dave Zastadale, I go way back, a punter that was really good in Cleveland. You know, Phil Dawson, I have a, a Phil Dawson's um, jersey framed in my basement. You know, I have when Adam Vinatieri, you know, became the most, what was it, the, mo the all-time leader in points in NFL history, he gave me his cleats and he signed them. So nice. I've, I've had a, oh yeah. I, I So I've had, I've always, me, I'm, some guys, they don't think like that. Some guys want no parts of the kicker. Screw them. Like they don't practice and, and training camp. They're over there, you know, after the first period, they're kind of hanging out. They'll go play golf later. So some guys don't really know what it takes to play that position. But as much as, you know, they're not banging every day or doing those different things, it's a really stressful job to have and when you're called upon to kick and you know to kick a football you know every mechanic every step has to be on point and I, I just had I'm, I've always been different I've always looked at them as part of the team man like I've been around some really good now because I've been around some really good kickers 
I had a li- different level of respect. Now, if I was with some uh, some guys that weren't that that good, I probably would think differently. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the guys that I've been around, I've been fortunate to be around some kickers and and punters that that really changed the game. And let me add this one other point, Lawrence. I realized, let's say, you know, Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee, I considered him the 12th man because if we were backed up or pinned down our offense, he could, you know, boomstick. He could put us in position and pin the offense, pin pin the uh, the opposing offense. So I loved it when he was able to get a, a good punt and because it helped us. It helped our team average and all that. So it all it all plays a part. And now I, I wasn't one of those guys. I knew you were looking for something juicy here. About you respecting the, the kickers, but now nah, I got a I got a ton of respect for those guys, man. Hands oh, down. Oh uh, yeah, I, I wasn't looking. I was just curious. <laughs> you know, I know some players. You know, I've yeah. seen it. You see it all the time. These guys ain't real football players. You know, yeah. and then you yeah. got other players that are like, well, they help a team. You know, yeah, they're yeah. in the locker room. You hear their voice. They're talking <laughs> to you know, and, and 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 like you say, you know the. They're that neutral party, you know, that mm-hmm, you can go and talk mm-hmm, to and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, absolutely, I get it. Yeah, we, and, yeah. Well, I really don't uh, doing training camp. That's the one time where if I saw Pat or something, if he had a, a smile on his face, I'm like, "What are you smiling about?" There's nothing to smile at because <laughs> I got to go bang and do nine on seven, and my fingers hurt, my shoulders hurt. I want to take off all these pads, and he's smiling and cracking jokes, and that that's the only time it would piss me off. Well, because all he has to do is kick about 12 kicks. Yeah, the and he would, during and, the day. Yeah, and see, Pat, <laughs> he knew how to just really get up under your skin. And uh, he, he he did it intentionally, but it was all funny games, man. We we had a uh, a really, really tight relationship. He was he was my locker mate. You know, we were locker mates. And uh, I don't know if I ever told you this story, but the when I first signed my first year in Indy, we were, the you know, the regular season is starting and it's like week. I don't know what week it is, but it's like becoming, you know, those weeks that are piling up. It's like, okay, I got to go into overdrive. And I was one of the first per- people to arrive at the facility. And Pat was shortly after me all the time. It was like me and him in the locker room and everyone else would follow. And uh, I remember it was one day I didn't want to hear. I didn't want to hear his voice. I didn't want to hear him see him smile. I was just fed. I didn't want to. I was just one of those days. I just want to come here, mm-hmm. do my job. And get the heck out. And he just kept talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. And, talk. and I turn around and I'm like, is this what I have to look forward to for the rest of the year? And he looks at me with a smile on his face. He's like, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was just like, OK, all right. OK, this is what I have to deal with. You know, but, and we became really good friends after that. But I wanted to kill him. I wanted to kill him. <laughs> well, you know, he's taking that talking and talking and talking and, 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 and <laughs> right. made some money out of it. So, oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. That's my guy. That's my All guy. right. So we're, um, yeah, so we, we, we're, we're one and four. But you could take a lot of, lot of out of this past game. I mean, can't oh, you? Yeah. And go, you know, this team really does have a chance. I mean, e- even though we're one and four, there's – there's enough there. You've seen enough through three quarters to go, all right, we lost to a really good football team in overtime. Yeah, we probably should have beat them. But, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I feel like with a few tweaks, and I, like we said, you know, hate to use it as right. an excuse, but a little more health. Right. I feel like this team could probably match with any team in the NFL given the right circumstances. Yeah, I mean, it's encouraging the way they played the Baltimore Ravens and mm-hmm. Lamar Jackson. However, for them to turn this around, they have to go out and win within your division. Mm-hmm. You know, for you to have a shot to even get to the, the 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 postseason and getting guys back healthy. And if you can maintain and win within the division, as we all know, it starts there. You have a shot if you can get start to get guys back healthy. Now, the last two weeks has been encouraging. I, I'm with you. I mean, anyone watching it, yeah, you have every right to be pissed off at certain situations of the game mm-hmm. that happened last week and the letdown of 19 points and so forth and so forth, so on and so forth. But it's encouraging. This team, watching them last or this past Monday, they don't look like a one in a team that only won one game in five weeks. Mm-hmm. So uh, very encouraging. I think 
they're getting closer every every week. It's getting a little bit closer to putting it all together. I think if you can go out here and win this game, I think, in my opinion, they're expected to win this game against the Texans. And I think uh, with everything they have going on on that side on um, in Texas, in Texas, I think this is a great week for them to carry over that momentum, carry over that success offensively. Let's let's tighten some things up defensively. Let's continue to create some turnovers and protect the football and keep putting the ball in our playmakers' hands. Think we have a shot. Yeah, but I, I want to caution all the listeners and viewers right now. If you think that we're just going to face up against uh, Houston Texans without oh, no. Deshaun Watson and just put the hammer down, you better mm-hmm. go back and watch how they played the New England Patriots last week because Davis Mills, oh my. Yes. He threw 70% completion percentage, over 300 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions against a Bill Belichick defense, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Right. And uh, that's that that puts a little bit of worry in me. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, yeah. but you're right. you got to win your division games. Mm-hmm. And the Colts getting T.Y., maybe he plays. Is it Listen. coincidence that Listen. he comes back <laughs> off of IR and starts practicing the week of the Texans game? I don't yeah. know about all that. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm sure T.Y. had this day circled on his comeback tour. And I've been in that locker room when T.Y. has, you know, something about the Texans, something about it. And I'm going to say a name that, you know, he had a, a, a great career playing the cornerback position, Jonathan Joseph. Well, Jonathan Joseph with it, with, was their lead cornerback years ago when I was there. And when I tell you T.Y. just separated himself as being one of the top tier receivers, he always had a great game against the Texans, man, really did. And if we have a shot to have him back just, just in small doses, it's going to help this offense because – Teams have to respect his speed. He still can run. Uh, you have to respect his his. You know, the guy has hands like glue. You know, anything that touches his hands, uh, he's able to pull it in. He's not that big of a guy. You know, if you stood up next, I mean, you're you're freakishly tall. But like, if any normal person stood right. next to him that was average height, I mean, the guy is he's small, but he he's got a heart of a lion, and we can have him back against these Texans. Uh, that 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 would uh, serve very well, and and it build up the morale of the team to have their, their, you know, one of the guys who've been there as long as anyone else has, you know, from a player standpoint, but yeah, I'm with you. You can't walk in this game thinking this is going to be a cakewalk because both of these teams are very familiar with each other, very familiar. And divisional games are always very tough to win. Um, I noticed the home game. Listen, you mentioned it. Davis miles are coming off a career day. Chris Moore a receiver. They brought up from, practice squad against the Patriots and the Bill Belichick readily prepared defense. The guy had over hundred yards receiving. So they've had some explosive plays and they lost by a game winning field goal. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a very close game. So those guys are taking that as a, that game as a, you know, a measuring stick. Hey, we just competed with Bill Belichick. And now we're going to face a team that we're very familiar with regardless of Deshaun Jackson not being there, we can win. They they are thinking they can win with the guys they have. And this is a statement game for them as well. They're going to walk into, you know, uh, Lucas Oil and think, you know what? We can get these guys regardless if T.Y. is back. So this is going to be a dog fight. This is going to be – this this game could be either, in my opinion, either will be really close or it could be really – or it could be very lopsided towards, you know, leaning towards the Colts winning this football game. So uh, – you can't call it a trap game because both teams have similar records. And, yeah. you know, the same both record, teams are going to – The same record, right. <laughs> the same record. So this is a vision, the division game. Both teams understand how important this game is for their, their record and, and for them to have potential hopes to play in the postseason. It just – it's amazing how fast in the NFL – Things can flip flop. Five years ago, the Colts and the Texans were battling it out to win mm-hmm. division championships and 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 get positions right. in the uh, in the playoff. And now right. they're both sitting at one and four. You know, you know, starting off the guessed. season, it's just it's a it's a uh, it's a, one of those situations that 
um, just kind of makes you scratch your head and go only in the NFL, right? Only in the NFL. I've been a part of it. You, you brought it up. I've been, a, I hate to go back and through memory lane, but 2014, that was the time where Andrew Luck, every year he was in the national football league. He won one more. He got deeper mm-hmm. into the playoffs. 2014 AFC championship game that summer, as you know, as well as most of the Colts listeners and viewers, Frank Gore joins the team and Andre Johnson. When I saw that trade made or that um, free agency pickup, mm-hmm. I thought we would, it was a shoe in for us to, to play in the, the, the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl. But yet we finished eight and eight and next year didn't make the playoffs for consecutive, two consecutive years. And, Andrew Luck retired. So much that can happen from year in to year out. And for the Colts to be sitting here, I think it, I, I, you know what I do think the benefit of this, and we'll see as the season unfolds. The, some of the young guys who have been on this football team have been, been walked into a great situation. These guys have won a ton of games and um, been in the postseason and never really dealt with really adversity. how to adversity, adversity and really dig yourself out of a hole and what it means to go through it. They're fairly young. We've, you know, they have the right guys in place. They just got to finish football games, man. One game at a time, one week at a time, and you have to win within your division. You have to. I can't say that enough. Well, that is that is true. Um, finishing a game is is something that the Colts have had issues with the last two years. Uh, mm-hmm. the last year, I mean, there were multiple games where they come out hot, and then. Heck, last year against the Ravens was pretty much an identical mirror to what we saw this year. You know, the Colts dominated them the entire first half and, and only, you know, gave up three points or something in the first. And then in the second half, they came out. Lamar Jackson started throwing the football, you know. Right, right. Now, now this year, the, the, the Colts stretched that to three quarters, not just two, but <laughs> it, the, the results were the same. You know, the yeah, result, the yeah. final results were the same. The Colts still walked out with a loss. Gave up the lead, blah blah blah, and it's frustrating. It, it, it is, it is very Heck frustrating. yeah, man. It, it's frustrating to watch just a team that's so talented on paper that we thought they we just didn't, you know. This goes to show you how injuries affect your ball club and how continuity does matter. And mm-hmm. when you have guys, and I was wrong, I can admit I was wrong, I thought this wouldn't be such a problem when you have Ryan Kelly out and Quentin Nelson out and your quarterback didn't see much of the preseason. And I thought these guys could be, could gel together once they were together, once they were all healthy, but no, some, some things aren't all the same. You know, it depends on where you are in your career and those guys hadn't worked together. Now this was a year, you know, after a year of them playing together. Yes. I, I lost that. Somewhere in my thought process, I forgot that. But uh, it does matter to have that continuity. And unfortunately, you know, health is a part of the game. Availability is the your best way of, of, of winning. And, and I've always said this, you know, all the good teams that uh, make deep runs in the playoffs that get to the postseason and, and ultimately win the Super Bowl, it's not necessarily about the best team on paper. It's about the most, the healthiest team on paper. Mm-hmm. You know, so th- this is a, one of those examples of it. All right. So I'm going to throw something at you real quick with okay. the Colts being one and four. And they face now th- this is hypothetical. So we're going to we're going to look at schedules the next four weeks. OK, okay. Colts face the Texans, the Niners, the Titans and the Jets. OK, Niners, that's a lot that the Titans. Ni- Niners, Titans and Jets. With the Texans. Got it. All right. So, if by some chance everything gels right, I feel like all four of those games mm. are winnable games. Winnable. Winnable. I'm not saying that it's it's something that you're going to, you know, it's a guarantee. I'm saying mm-hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a chance. Niners are a good team. Titans are a good team. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Jets, obviously, they got their own issues just like the Texans. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, Wilson is the, I think one of the only quarterbacks right now in the NFL that legitimately have a shot at breaking Peyton Manning's rookie interception record. Okay. <laughs> right. So, right. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's hard to, to come by, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now we go and look at the Titans schedule. We're sitting at three and two currently mm-hmm. this week. They play the bills. 
Okay. AFC. The Chiefs. AFC. Then the Colts. AFC, okay. And then the Rams. Okay. Oh, yeah. This is really going to, okay. This is really going to come down to tiebreakers and division wins. And uh, this is very, this has got very interesting because if the mm-hmm. Colts can go out and take care of business this weekend, and win a division game, you get the 49ers, which I agree, it is a winnable game, but you have to beat the Titans. Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's a winnable. That's the key of that whole yeah. thing. Yeah. You got right. you got you got to beat your divisional game this right. week with the Texans right. and you got to beat the Titans. Right. But, yeah, this this for the sec, moving into the second quarter of the season, that's going to be huge for you to get the Titans game mm-hmm. and as you mentioned, uh, the the Tennessee has the Rams coming up as they they're going to get into the thick of their schedule, the meat of their mm-hmm. schedule. So, you know, that's a toss up. We don't know how that can potentially work out, but for the Colts, to, if they can take care of their business, wow, that's that looks very intriguing. That that looks salvageable. That it with does. everything it- that happened. With injuries and what have and now you're getting Ty is close to coming mm-hmm. back. Now we don't know if he's going to be full throttle or what have you, but that's a great piece to to add on to your uh, your um, these next few weeks. But that but that Nelson is definitely good. might be coming back, you know, on another week. So mm-hmm. that's another mm-hmm. situation, and you got all these different guys that are starting. to – Braden Smith's getting healthier, so we might end up right. having him on the tackle position. All right. sorts of things that are. Woody Pay is coming back this week. Mm-hmm. Everything's falling in for the Colts right now to where it looks like they're look starting at to get you, healthier. Man. Look, look, okay, found some optimism and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is, this is. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. That is very, very. This is important, but this game here, it, that's that's oh, yeah, what makes definitely. this game very important. Yep. Very important. I mean, they're all going to be important, but this. Excuse me. You have to come out. You have to win this this football game to give yourself a chance these, going into the second quarter of your season. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Oh, you you can't lose to a game that uh, you're expected to win. You just can't. Right. And and, right. and especially at being a divisional game, because anything could happen. You know, yeah. anything could happen within the division. You know, we we've talked at length mm-hmm. about injuries. It could occur. You know, look at the look. You look at last year. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. They were. What 11, 10 and 0, 11 and 1, and heck, the you know, things start to fall apart. And mm-hmm. so anything could happen here, but that that's very encouraging. Very it is because uh, if the Titans go two and two in that in that in that uh area and the Colts go four and oh, Colts take their division lead. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's it's definitely doable. It is ve- it is definitely so um there's op- optimism. But it's a really slim, you know, margin for error through first four weeks. And that's just through the first four weeks, you know, because there's still right. plenty of season left to go. Right. But right. it, we legitimately, by week nine, could be tied or, you know, on the lead of the division because our meat of our schedule is in our past and the Titans right. have got theirs staring them right in the face. So, yes. Yeah, and that I think that that will that will paint a clear picture of who this football team is because mm-hmm. we keep we keep teetering back and forth. We're one and four, but we see a much better football team, and you know we could be three and two as opposed to one and four. You know mm-hmm. the, the the Rams game was very close, came down to the end against Baltimore. We could have won that one. I mean they they're, they're teetering right there. You know it's like what what do we have to do uh, to get over that hump? And so that's going to, yeah, that's going to, for me, and you you bring up a really, really, really smart point here. By that time in the season, we'll, we'll have a clear picture of who this football team is and, and uh, which guys are back. And will there be a run for the postseason? You know, how are we looking within the division? Because every coach tells you what, you know, you have to win your division to get to the postseason. And I'm sure Frank Wright is hammering that point down. No matter what has happened throughout this season, this is a division game. Something that the Texans hasn't done a ton of is beat the Colts in the, in Lucas Oil. So yeah. they had that that in their favor as well. So um, yeah, you bring up a really really good point. And um, you know Carson Wentz, uh, the, Carson Wentz, the guys that you lean on, the guys that are merging, the Michael Pittman Jr., uh, Jonathan Taylor. 
you know, these guys have to, you gotta, you gotta bring your game to another level. You have mm-hmm. to, you gotta play, you gotta play mistake free football. You gotta lead from within because one and four is tough. We've talked about it before in the locker room. I've been in these locker rooms. Guys are, you know, one and four, you're, you're in the first quarter of the season. Guys are still excited about the season. These next four weeks, if things don't turn the corner, you start, those guys start to drop off slowly. Mentally, they start to get checked out. And now you have to, now you, you know, you have an even bigger problem. So it's, it's sorry about the, the, the planes going overhead. Oh, you know? good. Um, one thing before we end this is I, I, I want to say another thought for optimism is you were talking about Carson Wentz and this offense and how they're starting to gel. And it's not just those names that you, it's the other guys that we said needed to step up the Paris Campbells and, and, and the, the Moali Cox and yeah. I mean, well, okay. So like in the Ravens game, mm-hmm. we were seeing Carson Wentz start to get that connection with Paris Campbell. We yes. saw him start to get that yeah. connection with Mo Alley Cox on in, in the Dolphins game. Yeah. And now I have a thunderstorm in my area. So <laughs> I got I'm gonna have to be chasing it down with buckets because I have that bad bad oh. roof that uh uh the construction company will have to come and and they're scheduled to do my roof uh sometime next week, but yeah, it ain't helping me right now. Oh, but man, I, I feel for you. It happens. It happens. Uh, so I'm gonna have to cut this short here in just a second because I mean it's yeah. boring. Um, but Got it. Got it. yeah, man. Uh, what's awesome is, like I said, offensively, this team is starting to look like it's gelling, and they're going to be getting some mm-hmm. of their playmakers back. Defensively, we need some of those guys to step up, right? Like you're yeah. saying, your DeForest yeah. Buckner's, uh, your Xavier Rhodes. You know, Xavier, Xavier Rhodes yes. need to step up. Uh, yeah. He was that guy, uh, Kenny Moore and mm-hmm. Darius. Mm-hmm. Uh, Darius is out there. You know what? I'm on the line. Same with DeForest Buckner, but you know, you still. know what? You know what? I don't like about this is one thing that's a pet peeve of mine. And I watch, I watch other linebackers throughout the league. And I had a coach approach me, and I and I make the point quick. I had a coach approach me years ago when obviously playing in Cleveland, and things didn't go our way. And coaches mm-hmm. watch the film. They watch, you know, when you're watching the All-22, you can see everyone. And yeah. if if an offense makes a big play on our defense, like I would have these terrible body – I had terrible body language. It was almost as if I was blaming whoever – I was blaming someone for a big play, a teammate of mine. And a coach pulled me to the side. He's like, you know, when you're a leader, people watch everything. They watch, they watch every – and your body language sucks. Like you have to do a better Ooh. job of not, you know, uh, having better posture, and that's one of my pet peeves about Darius Leonard. Anytime there's a big, moment, big play or whatever, he's throwing his hands up like, "What the heck are we doing?" And that trickles over to a guy that may be a practice squad guy, a guy that may may not be an All Pro, and they're getting, you know, it, it could it, it comes off as negative energy. And the la- that's the last thing you want to do defensively when you haven't been dominant at all. So there's nothing for you to do other than stop them from, you know, having big gains on your defense. So that's my one pet peeve. And I, I know I kind of changed things up here, but that's my one pet peeve about Darius Leonard. Even though I think he's a phenomenal player, he he he's an emotional player. He leaves it all out there on the field. That's one area where I think it could help his ball club. It just – applying more positive energy if something like that happens yeah the energy that he i mean like you say he's an emotional player he plays with his emotion uh mm-hmm. which allows him to make great plays but at the same time when you're doing when you have that like you said i mean when you when you got other guys especially your practice squad guys or inexperienced or younger guys uh mm-hmm. you gotta have to check it you know when yeah. something doesn't yeah. go your way and you get frustrated yourself you know uh right. Right. that 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 emotion and that energy can be something the team can feed off of and that's a that's a bo- mm-hmm. that's a, that's definitely a positive thing but it can also right. be you, that negative thing that you're talking and about to to pat myself on the when i had that coach <laughs> approach me you know what i would do anytime something like that happened uh if a big gain happened on vonte davis or something or or, mm-hmm. or darius butler or any of the guys that i knew cared about getting it right and making the play 
I would run up to him. Hey, man, you're, you're all right. We're, we're good. We're good. We'll stop next time. Don't worry about it. Don't. So you want positive reinforcement at that time and the body language stuff and throwing hands. You know what that you, you know what that that flame fire, that flame fuels um, negativity and pointing fingers at each other. You know, and I just I, I don't think for a team that's one and four, you got to you got to watch it. You got to watch it, because if this thing doesn't turn the corners the next half, that could snowball and get out of everyone's control. And when that happens, your season is is, is over. But yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's going to happen. He's a great player and they'll get it fixed and, and the offense will, will move the ball and this team will start finishing games and, and we'll have uh, more positive things to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I'm hoping that it turns around this week against the Texans. Well, uh, I'm going to have to end this due to, yeah, yes, we already no, discussed go take that. Care of you. Yeah, yeah. Um, you go but take I, care. I appreciate you spending that extra whew, an hour with me today. That's great. Yeah, That's great. Yeah. And uh, hopefully next week when we get together, we'll, it'll be more of a positive situation. I'm counting on it. Yep. All right. Until next time, I'm Lawrence Owens. That was Dequell Jackson. You were listening to Believe in Colts. Go Colts.